Joe Burrow is certainly back. The Bengals, well, I think they're back too. Let's get into the Bengals' biggest win of the season. You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, Bengals fans, and welcome to another episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. I'm your host, Jake Lisko. He's your host, James Rapine, and the Cincinnati Bengals at 4-3 and three are coming off of a really, really impressive game against the San Francisco 49ers that we're going to dive into in this episode. Some great stuff from the offense that we're going to talk about. Appreciate everybody who's making us your first listen. Appreciate all the everydayers out there as well, James. And biggest takeaway by far, and there's a lot of really good and I'd say sizable takeaways, is Joe Burrow in a big, big way looks very back. All the way back. Back, uh, the best we've seen him certainly uh, since, it was certainly this season. And I'll tell you, it's the best I've seen him since that first day of training camp when my big takeaway was, oh my God, Burrow is amazing. And he looked so good today. And uh, that was July 26th. So it's been more than three months since uh, I've seen Burrow play, I would say, at this level. And you look at the numbers, 28 of 32, completed 19 straight at one point, 283 yards, three touchdowns. He was dealing. He was accurate. I thought he was seeing the field well. I thought he was making good decisions. And uh, obviously, they made big plays when they needed to. Uh, not that there were a ton of huge plays downfield or anything like that, but the touchdown to Jamar, for example. Uh, I just uh, I think he was – everything you could have hoped for him to be today coming into the game. And then so I, I think uh, I I'm a bit surprised by, by how well he played today, given uh, who they were going up against uh, a desperate 49ers team and they should have scored 40. That's the, mm -hmm. the part that's kind of crazy. They left some points on the board and 40 would have been realistic. So this offense certainly set the tone and, and Joe Burrow's the, the leading cause of that. And it's not, perfect for any nitpickers out there that, that want to talk about. I, I don't know if anyone listening to this show wants us to nitpick right now. That's not the point, but I feel like anytime we're positive about this team, I, I feel this like voice in the back of my head, like, Oh, put a caveat on it, put a disclaimer on it because they're four and three and they had the Rocky start and their wins were only against the NFC teams and all this stuff. But when Joe Burrow plays the way that he played in this game and can move, which was the biggest aspect by far, there's no reason to have major reservations about this team, about this offense, because when he can scramble the way he scrambled, when he can call his own number for a QB draw, when he can get outside of the pocket and extend plays, just like little pedestrian extension of plays, when he can make three different 49ers miss in the pocket to complete a first down to T Higgins on the first drive of the game, to get a touchdown, to get to that fast start, to get them off to the game script that we talked about them needing in this game. And on top of that, he's playing with great timing, great accuracy. Then this is a potent team. This is the team that the Bengals were last year where they were hyper efficient on offense. The success rate was through the roof. They're staying ahead of the chains in the first half. I don't remember the exact number. And Kyle Shanahan said something like this after the game too, something like 17 out of 20 of their first downs. And, and it's not exactly that because they had 28 or 29 first downs but only eight third downs. They were three of eight on third downs, but that just tells you they're staying ahead of the chains consistently throughout the game. And there have been some signs of this, but the, the way he was moving today has to be such a, a boost of confidence for fans, for the team. I thought protection was really good. We can talk about that as well, but nobody feels themselves more than when Joe Burrow is able to run for a first down. He gets so hyped after he's able to scramble for a first down, break the pocket, get up field. Mm -hmm. and, and that does so much for his confidence and to get him into a game. He's talked in the past a lot about how he likes to get hit. Still a little bit scary for everybody else, but it gets him going. And his running today was a huge part of their success. It was. It was. He ran for 
43 yards and it was really what 44 yards there's a um a kneel down in there he's all the way back i think that's proof and and there were a couple runs the 20 yard run where mm-hmm. he he's he's not sliding not thinking about sliding you think about him or you say he likes to get hit that's an example of it and uh at the same time the biggest hit he took was on the scramble yeah when he just gets crushed and it didn't matter. He throws a, a perfect ball despite Fred Warner bearing down on him, breaks away from Nick Bosa somehow. And, uh, yeah, I think once he made that play, he was like, oh, I'm, let's go. Mm-hmm. And uh, takes that hit, and it was it, it got him going. I think it got the team going. Because if they get sacked there, then it's the slow start, and who knows if they get in rhythm. And instead, he's – what seven of nine finds Tyler Boyd for the touchdown on the opening drive and in 10 of 12 on the first two drives for 95 yards and two touchdowns. Like he, he was dealing early. He didn't miss a pass for the rest of the half, right? It wasn't until the back shoulder fade to T Higgins, this incomplete coming out of halftime that he missed 19 his next straight. Pass. Yeah. 19 straight. So that would have made it 20. He would have tied Ken Anderson and it was back to back weeks. Now back to back games, 17 of 19 to start the game. That's insane. And I know he didn't finish the way he wanted to against Seattle or the way anyone wanted him to. But uh, he did we're, this seeing, we're seeing signs of, of life. And, and I think that's the other takeaway. This team did respond because they were up 14 to 10 at halftime. They should have been up by more. Mm-hmm. They're on the road. The 49ers probably felt pretty good about where they were at considering how they played. And they answered. And it's not like they gave up the lead. It's not like they didn't go out and get points. I know it was a 56-yard field goal, but they still got points on their opening drive uh, to start the third quarter. I think that stuff matters. So I, I, I think they did respond the right way when they did have mistakes or issues today. The the key microcosm of that, or, or whatever you want to call it, would be the 10-play, 78-yard touchdown drive after San Francisco scores to make it a one-score game in the fourth quarter. The Bengals go up 24-10. to 10 after a couple of Brock Purdy picks, and and we'll talk about those. I mean, the linebackers today, huge impact for those guys. And, and the defensive line to some extent, too. Um, but they come, the offense comes back onto the field, and, and Burrow's nearly perfect again. Mm-hmm. And you talk about the number of, of pinpoint passes for Burrow in this game. The Tyler Boyd touchdown, the T. Higgins play uh, on that scramble that we talked about where he makes three guys miss in the pocket and gets out of the sack. There's a Jamar Chase corner that he he throws with ridiculous pinpoint accuracy. There's uh, the Tyler Boyd play in the middle of the field with the safety coming down, and, and that ball had to be exactly where it was. The, the, and, and that drive, that, that drive to answer featured that insane throw to Jamar Chase on the left sideline for 20 yards. In addition to that, I don't think he threw an incomplete pass that drive. He didn't, and Mixon had a couple great runs. That drive as well, Joe Burrow added a couple scrambles, uh, uh, one of them being a QB sneak, which another tool to talk about that wasn't in their arsenal until this game, in addition to the QB draw. These things being part of the offense again, you can see the difference they make. It, it's it's a massive thing that, that cannot be underrated. And now that he's healthy and playing at a high level against a really good defense that has had struggles, but not to this extent, you should feel pretty good about the offense for the most part, going forward, I think our, our trade stuff from the last week, a lot of that is still pertinent. Uh, tight end running back and Mixon was great in this game. Don't mean that to take anything away from Mixon, but, um, you know, if, if you're poking holes, that's where you poke them. But still, when Burrow's going this way, you feel great about this offense. No doubt. No doubt. Burrow set the tone, but there, there was some other stuff. You mentioned the the trench play. You mentioned Joe Mixon. I think we should dive into some of that. So let's get into the offense a bit more, a little bit more deeper than we have and continue what's been uh, been a fun uh, time. I will say this. This locker room was as happy as I've seen them all season and coming off the field as happy as I've seen them. So let's uh, let's get into this a bit more and, and continue to dive in following a Bengals 31 to 17 win. We will do that coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. 
Whether you're prepping for a daily draft or scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to provide you with players that are guaranteed to fit your roster. Let's see who Vinny has picked out for us on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. And Falcons wide receiver Drake London had a rather quiet week eight against the Titans secondary. He caught just five passes for 55 yards, but should be targeted to get on track with a much bigger game this coming week against the Vikings secondary in week nine with a potential QB change looming to Taylor Heineke. Atlanta should be more effective with their downfield passing game and London can also see higher volume. Vinny Iyer from Locked On Fantasy Football is going to help you win your fantasy championship and eBay Motors knows a championship team is all about each player being a perfect fit. The same with your vehicle. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. From brake kits, LED headlights, roof rack bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber, not cash. So whether it's something as simple as headlights, taillights, turn signal bulbs that, let's be honest, you can replace yourself or... I'm a big proponent of replacing the air filter, which is really easy to do. And places charge you a lot to do it. You can do it on your own with a quick YouTube video. If you're watching us on YouTube right now, get it from eBay. eBay is going to have the right filter for you. You can look it up. You're going to save money. You're going to save time because you don't have to drive to a place to get it done. Order from the convenience of your own home with eBay Motors. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay, guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Let's say on the topic of this offense, as we discussed before, we talk about the rest of the team and, and Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, who both played well. Tyler Boyd had big plays in this game. Yoshi had another scramble drill touchdown. Uh, to, to just put the capper, on the Joe Burrow topic for today, and we'll come back to Burrow, I'm sure, when we have a chance to look at the film. But uh, Joe Goodberry tweeted about Joe's stats, Burrow's stats, over the last three games. In the Bengals' winning streak, he's 88 for 113 for 785, eight touchdowns, just two picks. That's a 78% completion percentage, seven yards per attempt, passer rating of 112 or so. In addition to that, I looked at some of the advanced stats. And in that three-game winning streak, Joe Burrow leads the NFL in dropback success rate, which is does this play add positive EPA? Leads wow. the NFL ahead of Brock Purdy, Patrick Mahomes, and Josh Allen. Leads the NFL in completion percentage in those games ahead of Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, and Josh Allen. And in a completion percentage over expected ahead of Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, and Jalen Hurts. He's seventh in EPA per play. He's fourth in the EPA per play plus CPOE, completion percentage over expected composite. Just a lot of things to tell you he's playing really well by any metric. He looks to be getting healthier. He's continuing to improve. And he talked about after the game how he worked all offseason a lot on some of these things with mobility and, and making plays outside of structure that showed up in a big way. It's a big part of this offense. It's a big part of every successful NFL offense. Nice to see that back in the Bengals offense, even when everyone else is playing well. And Jamar Chase still led the way for the skill guys, but Jamar, Mixon, Higgins, Boyd, Yosevash, all these guys had their contributions. Even Trent Nerwin had, had some positive plays in this game. Yeah, and spread it out. He had completed balls to six different players by halftime and in targeted sample. It should have been seven. By the way, you want to talk about completion-wise. Heck, I wonder if he would have tied the record if, if Sample had caught that. I bet he would have. I would have to go back and see if that was the incompletion his last incompletion. But anyways, it's it's nice to see them be able to spread it around a bit. T. Higgins certainly moved like himself, and I, I thought looked much closer to himself. I thought it was good to see Boyd get in, the, in on the action early, and uh, I know there's been plenty of people wondering what Boyd is going to give this team down the stretch and, and, and for the remainder of the season, and I, I think it's an interesting question, a valid question. But um, – the, the thing that you wanted to see is is T. That was the, the clear cut, will he show signs of life? And I thought he showed that today. It's not like he was dominant, but still, five for 69, had the 33-yarder over the middle. Feel good about that. So I, I like that. I love the trenches. I thought the Bengals – I don't know what you you thought. And I you look at it, Burroughs sacked three times. 
I thought they performed well. And, and this was a defensive front in San Francisco. And I've spent the past couple of days here in the Bay Area where they were under a ton of scrutiny here locally. <laughs> and they've heard it. Oh, this defensive line, or that, what are they going to do? What are they? So they've heard it all week. And so they were as, probably as motivated as anyone. And I thought this Bengals offensive line did the damn thing. I thought they played at a, a really high level and held their own and allowed this offense to operate the way they had hoped. I think they held their own for sure. Maybe more than held their own. There, there was a couple of plays early where Orlando Brown was giving up a little bit more than I wanted him to give up to Nick Bosa, but it was, it was enough. Mm-hmm. And, and he, he didn't quite let the pressure get home. And I thought, Oh, at some point that dam is going to break. And Bosa did force Burrow to step up into a sack. In fact, I think maybe the worst offensive lineman in this game, and we'll see uh, when we go back and look at it, because it's always hard to tell watching live. But I think Alex Kappa was responsible for two of the sacks. Uh, had, a, had a couple of plays where he had a hard time with Eric Armstead. Which, but yeah. I, I didn't really notice Cordell Volson at all. I thought Jonah Williams, again, didn't notice him in pass pro at all. And I mean this in, in a positive way. In fact, the only thing I did notice from Cordell Volson in the past game was his first rep of the game where he was very good i thought it was a very good rep for him to start the game and then after that i I didn't he didn't jump out again and and some of the pressures were joe holding the ball a little bit longer waiting for plays to develop third downs trying to trying to create uh there was one that was like a little bit of hesitation maybe nobody was open and there wasn't quite an escape lane and burrow at times of course made them look a little bit better as well escaping a sack that led to a first down scrambling a couple of times, but I did think the offensive line played pretty well. And, and I mean, we talked about this off air going into this week. I thought that San Francisco interior was going to be a game wrecking force and Mm -hmm. the Bengals ran the ball well too. So it's not like it was just that, you know, they held up in pass pro and Eric Armstead did have a couple of sacks in this game, but for the most part, I think you got to be really encouraged with protection with the offensive line coming out of the bye against a really, I I know they're catching heat in San Francisco, but a really, really good pass rush with three of the top players at their position in the game. And, and and they held up. They did. And that's, that's why the first six games of the year when Burroughs hobbled and, and maybe it's less than six, but whatever, he certainly didn't look like he did today. It was really hard to judge the offense. It's just really hard to judge the offensive line. It's hard to judge each individual piece and all of those things. I think you and I have been pretty uh, pleased with how they've been in pass protection overall as a group, as a unit. Uh, now you're bouncing your head back and forth for those on audio because it, it's, it has been a mixed bag still. It hasn't been perfect by any stretch, but I think today was a step in the right direction. And, and like I said, I think it's the the happiest I've seen in the locker room. And I know those guys, trench players were excited with, with their performance. And, and I think they should be because Kappa coming into today was balling. Mm-hmm. And so if that's, there's no concern there, right? There's no concern, even yeah, though he did, you're right. He got beat. It's like a couple of plays and Eric Armstead's yeah. a freak. No doubt. And, and so it's like, all right, well, you take that. And so I, I think that this offense, all of those expectations, Jake, that we had coming into the year, Kansas city lost. Like they, they gained a game in the AFC today. And so screw the division. They gained a game in the AFC. So I I do think that that, uh, that's huge. And and I think that this Bengals team, they're they're playing, or or they have the ability to play, and they showed today that they have the ability uh, to be one of those top-tier teams. Now they need to keep it going, but I I think this offense is is certainly stepped up, and uh, obviously we need to get to the defense as well. But I was pleased with the offense overall. It starts with Joe Burrow in the trenches, and, and everybody else followed suit. And, and I love how they started the game with getting all of those skill guys involved. I think T. Higgins had two first downs on that drive. I think Jamar Chase had two first downs on that drive. Uh, and TB had the touchdown. Yep. And so when you get all those guys involved, and Joe didn't Mixon have his 20 yard run on the first drive, or is that the second drive? It was the first drive, right? They had the one. I believe it was goal. the first drive. It was the first drive because it got him inside the 10. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you like to see those guys all going. And, and when the offense shows you that they can be the offense again, and, and maybe it's a matchup thing, right? Maybe it's like San Francisco secondary sucks. I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe we look back on this in 10 weeks and that's what it is. But right now, I feel a lot like I did last year when the Bengals started to figure things out after the buy. And I thought, yeah, no, I think they're still good. And, and right now, again, 
I'm back on thinking this is a pretty good football team with a chance to make some noise. Like you said, James, we've got to get to this defense as well. Mixed bag there, but some really fun stuff on the defensive side of the ball as well against an offense that has been pretty productive. So we'll finish the show on defense coming up next. This episode of Locked On Bengals is brought to you by DoorDash. We've got a great deal for you with DoorDash. And if you're like me, you're really busy on game day. I'm glued to my seat. I'm watching the game. I'm doing my tweeting. I'm doing my social media. I'm getting my notes together for Locked On Bengals. And I'm hungry, man. James, they feed you in the press box. I could feed myself, I guess, hypothetically. But I'm too busy for that. And by the time the Bengals are done playing, I usually haven't eaten anything in the day. Six o'clock out here on the West Coast. I'm hungry. If I could DoorDash myself some Skyline right now, DoorDash is great. They won't get it all the way out here to me in Canada, but you can do that at home and any of your other local favorites that are available on DoorDash. And, and right now you can save some money too. You'll get 50% off up to a $10 value when, when you spend $15 or more on your first order. Just download the DoorDash app, enter promo code LOCKED23, Subject to change, some terms do apply. Again, 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order in the DoorDash app with promo code LOCKED ON. Again, promo code LOCKED23. Don't forget it. LOCKED23 for 50% off up to $10 on your first order with the DoorDash app if you spend $15 or more. Today's show is also brought to you by Schultz Jewelers. Schultz Jewelers, they know what you're looking for with this holiday season. And what it is, is that perfect piece for her. And maybe that's something custom. Maybe you don't know exactly what you're looking for, but Matt and his team, well, they can help you find it. They can take you through the process in a relaxing environment, guiding you patiently through each stage of buying or maybe custom designing that piece that she is going to love. Matt Schultz, is not only the owner of Schultz Jewelers, but he's a diehard Bengals fan himself, born and raised in Cincinnati. He's passionate about the traditions and family values of the Queen City, and he's going to be able to find you that perfect diamond, that perfect pendant, the perfect earrings, and they deal with lab-grown diamonds. So you can get that fia- get your fiancé that perfect dream ring without burning your wallet and really putting a hole in that wallet of yours. This is a modern jewelry store, Schultz Jewelers is. Between their unique custom designs, top-rated permanent jewelry, there really isn't anyone like them. So check them out right now at 2202 Dixie Highway in Fort Mitchell, just five minutes from the bridge into Kentucky, or online at SchultzDiamonds.com. That's S-C-H-U-L-Z Diamonds.com. We know the Bengals strive for perfection. Schultz Jewelers does too, because when it has to be perfect, it has to be Schultz Jewelers. Let's talk defense, James. I know that the final box score, it doesn't necessarily look like the defense had a good game. And there were some moments. There are some things that the defense needs to do better. Again, we're going to talk about explosive plays being something for this team to clean up. The pressure wasn't quite as consistent as I thought it could be. But the one caveat I'm going to throw out there really quick is that a lot of these 49er yards were garbage time yards. They, they, what was it, like 69 yards or so of offense on that last drive of the game? So you you take 70 yards off at the top, the 49ers go from 460 yards down to to about 390 on 54 plays, which, uh, you know, isn't great. Like I said, there were some explosives with 7.2 yards per play. They also add a bunch of yards at the end of the first half when the Bengals are, are just trying to exchange yards for time. So while the 49ers did get close to sneaking some points out of that first half, and those yards aren't meaningless, I I do take those with a bit of a grain of salt. So uh, that being said, you look at the drive-by-drive results for the Bengals' defense, and there were, what, two three-and-outs? They got off the field on a five-and-out where where they gave a one first down, got off the field after that. I guess that's like a six-and-out, or maybe the first down was on a second down, so it's a five-and-out. They they have the, the two takeaways. On a game that was sloppy, really, on both sides, something we didn't talk about the offense, and I'm just going to cursorily mention the Bengals put the ball on the ground too much on offense in this game. They only lost one of them, but there were some near And it was a big one. And, and, it was. and it was a big one that they, thank goodness, responded to. But I'm That's sure right. we'll talk about Irv Smith on a later show. Yeah. Uh, both teams had turnovers 
in the low red zone. Both teams had punts inside the 40, but what was impressive to me about the Bengals defense is that they continue to have this clutch gene. Not only do they have the three and outs early in the game that helped them get off to an early lead, but Logan Wilson, Jermaine Pratt making huge plays when they need them to help flip the game in big ways. Like Jermaine Pratt's pick saves at least three points in the low red zone. And Logan Wilson directly leads to Jamar Chase's touchdown on that fake screen. So huge plays and and huge follow-ups for the offense. Nice to see the offense take advantage of those sudden change moments. And, And then they finish the game on the strip sack from Trey Hendrickson, a ball don't lie moment after a very, uh, let's just say questionable call on DJ Reader the play prior. Yeah. Yeah. Very questionable. <laughs> Look at you. Look at you complaining about the officiate. No, I'm just kidding. I, Ball don't uh, lie. Ball don't lie. Fair. I I think this defense, it was um it was solid. This is a tough offense. It's it's a tough offense to deal with. McCaffrey is a freak and he's perfect in it in, in this offense. And and to continue to keep the pressure on a guy in Brock Purdy who a lot of people didn't think was going to start this week, gets con- concussion protocol, he's in concussion protocol, gets cleared on Saturday. And I thought at, at one point in the third quarter they were getting George Kittle going. And I thought it was going to be the George Kittle show. And and that's just an example of the defense saying, no, let's let's relax, let's rebound, let's regroup. The other one is the first drive. Eight yards to Christian McCaffrey on first down. First play from scrimmage. That's it. You're giving up a first down. They're not going three and out. And they somehow force them to go three and out. I, I that, is, that is one of the underrated aspects of this. Because we could say, oh, well, they started fast and all of those. And they did on offense. But they also did on defense by somehow oh, oh, only giving up maybe a foot or two after uh, maybe a full yard. Uh, on the final two plays, after giving up eight on the first play from scrimmage, you get the ball to the offense, and they do what they did. So, no, Lou Anarumo, coming into today, we talked uh, some about coaching, certainly in the coaching battle between Lou Anarumo and Kyle Shanahan. And Shanahan got his licks in, but Anarumo adjusted. And I think you would take take exactly what uh, th- they got today, which is three forced turnovers in the final 16 minutes, only 17 points allowed. And obviously the turnovers were huge because it kept points off the board for San Fran and then it instantly put points on the board for the Bengals. And I don't know what Brock Purdy was seeing there. Clearly not Logan Wilson, but that interception was awful. Yeah, that was not a good play. Kyle Shanahan after the game talked about that play. Actually, I was watching the 49ers press conference and Kyle Shanahan says a lot. Like if you ask him a scheme question, you ask him what happened on a play, he'll tell you exactly what happened. That was dagger. The Bengals were in quarters, cover four. According to Shanahan, that's right where Logan Wilson should be in quarters, according to Kyle Shanahan. And Brock Purdy thought he overran it, and uh, he didn't. He was right in that window. And uh, not not a good decision. But like you said, it was it was a fast start for the defense. They did give up the touchdown drive on the second drive of the game for the 49ers. But getting that three and out to start the game and uh, stoning the old Madden favorite fullback dive on third and one. I don't know about you, but that play used to be unstoppable in Madden at least the last time I played in like 2012. Um, but but then they come out and they get two three and outs in the first three drives of the game. And the Bengals have a choice, or a chance, sorry, to go up 17-7, really take the thing by the horns. But uh, Burrow takes that sack and McPherson pushes the 50-yard field goal, leads to San Francisco immediately getting a field goal back. And, and then the, the Bengals go down the field, again, answering, keeping mm-hmm. keeping things going. But uh, you, you get the Irv Smith fumble there. So th- those couple of plays for the Bengals in the first half, getting off the field on two third downs on the first three drives of the game, gave them a chance to go up. Say, say San Francisco gets that field goal anyway. But if, if McPherson had hit his field goal or if Burrow hadn't taken the sack, say it's 17 to 10. And then if, if Irv Smith doesn't fumble on the one, maybe it's 24 to 10. Or on the mm-hmm. three, maybe it's 24 to 10 at halftime. And, and that's the kind of fast start you're looking for from the defense. Yeah. And, and there were some good adjustments from Shanahan in the second half, but that's where you get those takeaways and that clutch gene from this team with those picks from the linebackers and Trey Hendrickson closing the thing out on a gimpy ankle. And hopefully he's okay uh, coming out of the game, but he finished and, and played well. So that's a good sign. A, a lot to like for this defense, despite the stuff that they have to clean up with some of the big plays. Yep. Yeah, I think that's that's a good way to describe it. And 
they're going to have to clean it up because it doesn't get easier. You know, the, the Bills offense, we know how explosive it is. And uh, this is a good test on the road, answering the bell. And uh, the offense backed them up. And this was a heck of a win, Jake. It was a complete team win. I, I think e even Evan McPherson bounced back. You, you mentioned the 50-yarder kicking in a tough part of the stadium. And it was a very tough part of the stadium. Bounces his back, kicks a 56-yarder to start the third quarter to give the Bengals a seven-point lead. So special teams, defense, offense, they responded the right way, and they got a huge W. Three straight. They're 3-0 they're and oh, since Jamar Chase said he's always bleeping open. Uh, great great bounce back for McPherson. Yeah, I was trying to figure out which of those things to, to uh, make sure I addressed. It was a, a difficult part of the stadium to kick in. The wind is, is weird down there in, in Santa Clara, and – his 56 yarder is the second longest ever kicked in that stadium from, from what the broadcast said. So wow. it, it is a, know. it is a difficult place to kick. Um, you would like to see him make them, but you know, it, it is what it is. There's a joint effort there where Trent Irwin doesn't field the punt. They lose 10 yards of field position at least. And then Joe Burrow takes a sack. Shout out Andre Yosevash, another scramble drill touchdown followed by a great tackle on the ensuing kickoff return to pin the 49ers deep in their own territory. Uh, that, that was a fun sequence for Yoshi. We'll, we'll have more time to talk about that in the future as well. But for now, great win. Got a couple losses in the AFC North. Baltimore did take care of the Arizona Cardinals, but a couple other losses in the AFC North. Three-way tie at four and three. The Bengals complete their sweep of the NFC West, and we'll be back with more analysis of this game when we've had time to look at the tape soon on Locked on Bengals. Until then, Thanks for listening to this episode of the Lockdown Bengals podcast. Hootay, and have a good one.